And today, as you guys know, we are discussing networking, the power of it. Before we start, I'll just briefly remind you of some so-called housekeeping rules when it comes to ABSL clubs. So during the discussion, I would kindly recommend you all to keep your microphones and cameras muted so we can enjoy actually the content and the fireside chat of our speakers today. And a short remark that all ABSL club sessions are being recorded on behalf of ABSL in order to enforce knowledge sharing in our community and will be published on our official YouTube channels and social media. So the time has come to introduce our today's speakers and it's my pleasure to hand over the mic to a dear friend and partner of ABSL from Ministry of Programming this morning, Reshad Zachina. So good morning, Reshad, and please feel free to take over. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Adi, and thanks to ABSL for, uh, for this great uh, webinar today. I think we have two exceptional guests uh, that we have, that we have with us today. Um, Moha is, is a serial entrepreneur and investor, uh, currently also the CEO of Fendi, Mendy IO, a really cool company that you should check out. Uh, and Thomas, if Thomas Gronquist is uh, the CEO and founder of uh, Mio. Uh, as we said in the beginning, he was a professional uh, bicycle racer before, and then he, he went on to found se several businesses related to, to that, and he's very successful and doing very well at it. So uh, you should check out the, these two startups. They are, they are really amazing. Um, okay, since um, since the, the topic of today is networking, we're going to kick off uh, maybe with Moha. Uh, so, Moha, in your opinion, why is, uh, why is networking uh, a really important skill to master for, for everyone in business? So, first of all, I'm, I'm going to start this off in a, in a way that's a little bit particular. I actually hate the word networking. Uh, I feel it's too transactional. So when, when I got this invitation, I laughed, obviously, because to me, it's about because a lot of people think that I'm a really good networker. Like you've seen a few, like a, a couple of uh, I showed you kind of like some snippets of the ridiculous things that I'm having just happen over the next few days. And you could argue that I'm a very good networker. But what I would argue is that I am very good at building goodwill equity. You could argue it's the same thing. But for me, having people around you and knowing people and being plugged in that gives you access and that helps you be able to make things move forward and it makes you be able to help everybody around you the company that you're involved in uh help your career move forward um but at the same time having goodwill equity it's not it, to me it's not about really who you know but if you call them do they answer the phone and that's kind of why I look at this goodwill equity that is not as transactional, where you do good and the good comes back. It might come back in 50 years, but it's there. It exists. It's a real tangible thing. Um, so I think that's what I deal in. And it's really my I think the most valuable thing that I have is that goodwill equity, which to other people would be a form of networking. But it's about how you maintain those networks you build. And I think I can provide more about those things. And there's some cool stories about how we meet people. Uh, Thomas was telling one, which he can say, say now. Uh, but, uh, but to me, it's more about, you know, how you follow up for the next 20 years with those people that you get in the, into the room with. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I can attest to that. I, I recall uh, when, when I was in Stockholm at the time, uh, Moha, Moha used to organize these these open parties where where he would just invite people to come over, and then he would like invite uh, like all the cool people that he knows, and that was like a really unusual thing, especially um, a, a very unusual thing to do in Sweden, especially where people are not so open in that sense for bringing people to their homes. And um, at some of these parties, you would meet a lot of a lot of important people, and and I think it's it's a very unique. A uh, unique way to meeting, uh, to meeting, to meeting new new contacts. Um, <clears throat> the next question is for Thomas. So um, it, it relates to what Moha mentioned. So um, it's about basically bridging the fear of 
uh, reaching out to important people that you need to accelerate your business. So sometimes you need an, an investor uh, that that you heard about that could be um, that could be moving your business forward, or or you want to reach out to a really good engineer or or whatever you need. So so maybe uh, Thomas, um, uh, how how do you see how do you see this uh, this uh, this thing? Yeah, I think I might might be the worst person to ask about networking in that context that networking is about to try in many ways to reach a lot of people. I never organize those kind of parties that Moa is doing. And, you know, I'm origin from northern part of Sweden where we are famous saving oxygen and not talk so much. So, however, with my personal way of networking is more about targeting people and having a clear purpose that I would really like to meet this person uh, with a specific question or this person I could help or he or she could help me with something. It's it's more uh, my way of networking, I would say. So uh, yeah, when when I uh, exit from my last company, I set up one rule for for the future and that was like first first who, then why and what. So I, I, I think I waited for one year and then I heard this uh, podcast with uh, Johan Atby, who is the CEO of Fresh Brain, when I felt like I really must meet this guy and present my idea because I knew that he had an uh, interest in cycling. So uh, practically I, I just stalked his telephone number up and texted him. And the next week we had lunch and uh, yeah, practically started me from there. So uh, I think that this is my way of, of networking and from the, the connection with you. And then, uh, as you know, I met you, Rashad, and uh, now we're here and I'm meeting Moha. So uh, I think that is my way of networking more than creating those parties. But I, I really... And, I, I, I really like the people that are more open minded because that means also that sometimes uh, I get in, invited in those parties and, <laughs> and events as well. So, yeah. That, that's very cool. I'm, I'm from Costa Rica. But so for me, the whole idea back then wasn't really about you have to understand I'm an immigrant in Stockholm. And back then me and Rashad were broke. Now Rashad is doing way better, you know. Uh, but you know, w to me, it was basically about meeting cool people and having kind of like that extended family. Like I'm here in the cold in Sweden. I wanted to have cool people. And some of those people happened to be very successful. Some of them were more broke than I was at the time when I had just come back from, I just got into Sweden from Libya, from my time in Libya, even though I'm from Costa Rica. And uh, for me, it was about just having good people and then figuring out what. So I, I, this is funny because we said this a couple of minutes before. There's a good chance because you and I don't know each other that we have opposing views on this. Uh, and now I see that we actually look at this completely differently, which is going to be very, uh, it's going to be fun for people to watch because we really do things the opposite way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's exactly like, I mean, it's really cool that we, that we put you guys together uh, today because, because we have, we have two different roles, two different types of, uh, of creating connections uh, and I can attest that that you both are really successful at it so far because uh, you know Thomas was really efficient at getting what, what he wants uh, and wh while Moha is more like an like an open networker that knows like a th thousands and thousands of people so he can probably fill in a stadium of uh, contacts right now <laughs> so the next <laughs> question is the next question for Moha is I mean how do you uh, can, can you share some tips like how do you maintain that contact list like how do you know because I mean it's it's obvious a lot of people and like like if you just start mentioning some of them for the audience it, it, like their brain is going to completely explode so how right. do you, I mean do you have like a system do you have like a list do you have a tool that you use or something like that? Social media helps a lot. Like I, I this is funny, but I, I say that I talk to a lot of my investors and a lot of like re, a lot of these important people. There's a term in Sweden, which is the good people, which means the rich people, which I hate because a lot of the good people I know are not rich and a lot of the bad people that I know are rich. But uh, so basically I communicate to a lot of people through through social media. And uh, and for me, a lot of it is just because I am not 
Um, I don't have a very particular skill set. If you think about it, like the reason why this is so organic is because I really don't plan it. This is literally an extension of my own personality and people out there need to understand that yes, building a strong network is very important, but you can't do it the same way that I'm doing it. If you have Thomas's personality, you can't do it the way that Thomas is doing it. If you have Moa's personality, the first thing is understand who you are and build your strategy based on that. For me, I actually don't have a strategy. So bottom line, the way that I do things is that I, I thought I turned off uh, WhatsApp and it's clearly not working. Uh, it's still beeping, so sorry about that on my laptop. But so the way that I do it is that it's kind of like I'm just living my life and that's kind of made me make more money than I thought I was ever gonna make. Bottom line, that's the simple answer. I'm not great at anything. Uh, you know, when I have questions about product or something, I call smarter people. I call people like you, Rashad, and I ask questions and I have, you know, I'm surrounded by a lot of great people. So for me, it's about understanding what I bring to the table. And a lot of it is very, very common. Like the reason why I use this cup and I'm always drinking at it and I'm talking to very important people over Zoom all the time is because, you know, this is an investor of mine who's a good friend of mine and it's Aaron Anderson and this is his motto. And the reason why I use this cup and not a, uh, an Adidas cup or whatever is because this is a company that a buddy of mine owns. And so everything becomes kind of like part of your life, right? Like even like the, the classy Azul that I buy, it's like, you know, a friend distributes it. Like, so a lot of my life really becomes about these very well intertwined connections. Like I invest in people and they become my friends. And if you're not my friend, I'm out of your company. And it's kind of like, that's kind of how I do it, which I guess that many people could consider is a way less efficient way of doing things than Thomas does. And you could argue Thomas is way better at this. Uh, <laughs> it just, it just, it just works for us because we're different yeah. animals, right? Yeah. How do you see that Thomas? Like what, what, what are your tools and techniques? No, I think it's the same. I, I, I stuck to my personality and I try to improve what I can prove of it, but I, I don't have any tactics or strategy specific for networking. I, I just try to go with my personality and keep that up. Do you, do you like maintain a list of, uh, of, of people that you want to meet or that, that you need? No, I would say I'm, I'm rather an artist. So uh, when it comes to me, it's like I, I must meet this person or I, I uh, yes, yeah, so, so it's not like I'm maintaining any lists or anything. It's more coming to me and then I see the uh, clear purpose, why to connect with a new person and then I do it. That's a great question because, for example, you say that you had spotted Johan, you want to reach out to him and you had a plan. Me, I've never even done that. I've never done that for one person in my life. So I've never said, I want to meet, you know, Rashad. So I'm going to, this is my strategy. Like, I mean, I've DM'd a lot of people. Like I've, I, I'll like message people that I'm like, hey, it'd be great if we could meet up. That's how I've met some of my, my best investors. Uh, you know, one of them I'm having lunch with that. Uh, well, I don't have lunch. I only eat at night because I fast. Uh, but uh, she's having lunch and uh, at Reach in about a couple of hours. And, and that's how it is. I'll just send an email. It's like, hey, you know, my name is Moha. I'm doing this thing. I'd love to meet you. You want to come over to my place for a fika? And she's like, OK. And that's how it works. And networking, there's a lot of components that come into it. I think the most important thing, if you want to build a strong network, goodwill equity, because the word networking really does sound like I get this image of an escort on a private jet, which there's nothing wrong with it, but that's kind of like how I see it. It's too transactional. Um, to me, goodwill equity is a completely different thing, even if there is money and investment and connections and help and even nepotism involved, which I don't have a problem with a lot of those things. Uh, but bottom line is people need to become really good at the art to, to, to piggyback on what Thomas's word about him being an artist. And I do believe that from what I'm seeing so far in these 20 minutes that I've known you, Thomas. But people need to be very good at the skill of asking for favors and about yeah. being honest about what they have, what they don't have, and what their intentions are. People use networking as a way of, okay, here is 
X person, give me the name of any entrepreneur, any whatever, celebrity, any investor, any whoever it is, there's somebody they want to get to. So they have a very, so they, they come up with this strategy. They come up with these kind of like almost these pickup lines of how to get there. And people can see through that. And even if you get success, the runway to that is very short. You can only do that so many times. But if you're leading with absolute openness, and for me, what's really given me the most success is basically being very open. I'm this Costa Rican guy that doesn't know how to code. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm good at this stuff. I'm surrounded by smart people. Let's get together and let's figure things out. I don't have an ask. And if I have an ask, I'll say, this is my ask. The way that you ask for things, that builds loyalty because that's how the brain works. Uh, and obviously, I work with a neurotech company and I understand a bit about the brain and we can get deeper into that if you want. But to me, the most important thing is to be in the right place. Stockholm is incredible. What you guys are doing, MOP in uh, Sarajevo, you know, I'm very proud of you, Rashad. I love you, man. And I, I think what you've built the past eight years with your brother, Ferris, who I love dearly, um, is, is unbelievable. Uh, and I think what you've done for, you know, for that part of the world is remarkable. And if, if I was, you know, if I was in Sarajevo, I would figure out a way to get into your circle. Uh, just because you guys are really good people, to be honest. And I, and, and I see how you take care of your team. And I wish every company I'm involved in had your values. Uh, they don't all have the same values, unfortunately, and that's life. Uh, but for me, it's try to get in there, try to build those relationships and see what comes of it and just be clear with your asks. I'm sure if I had just landed in Sarajevo and I came up to you and I asked you for a job, I would get it um, because it's it's that art that Thomas talks about. It's, you know, it's it's an, it's a very tangible intangible. Yeah, yeah definitely, man. I, I think I think there is like a good point here about um, about having the good people around you and trying to. Uh, hang around the places where where the where where the smart people are and the cool people are, and and this is something you know that that kind of changed uh, in the, in the last couple of years after after COVID because um, you know people started behaving differently. First uh, during the COVID time, we, we know about the 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 huge rise of uh, of the online platforms and uh, using over using Zoom and uh, Google Meet and Teams and whatnot. So people got used to, to talking to each other just like, just in that way. And uh, what what at least I see now is that, you know, people are starting to change their behaviors a bit and uh, are are meeting each other in a different way. So I'm interested, like, how do you see this? I mean, do you, do you feel that uh, that the online platforms are are doing worse, uh, that that people want to meet more in person or or do you think that that you know is going to be a combo of those things or what do you recommend to the people uh, should they go to conferences more or should they should they like try to to attend uh, webinars like this or how uh, what do you think um, maybe thomas um, from your perspective how, how do you feel because also recently you have been in berlin at a really cool conference uh, like what what was the vibe there i mean has anything changed compared to a couple of years ago yeah, first, first of all, I, I really like the remote working environment and uh, also before COVID, when we started to work with you guys in, in Sarajevo, uh, I really enjoyed that part and then it came naturally through, through COVID to work more remotely. Um, I think I think in many ways uh, the virtual environment have given much more quality network than if I was supposed to move around and having physical meetings all the time and going to events and festivals all the time to meet meet people. So for for me, it's it's been a lot. But I also think that you need to meet people to get the the creative part of of uh, networking, and especially if you are working in a on on a problem or something and try to find a solution, it's better to meet up and speak about it and uh, of course you need those events also uh, to meet people and uh, uh, growing your your uh, network and getting inputs with new ideas i really like the setup with brilliant minds 
haven't been invited yet, but I hope uh, in a few years I, I might uh, can go to one of those parties as well. Uh, in, in Berlin, it was business as usual, I would say. Uh, I also attended to Slash last year. It was uh, almost in the end of the COVID, but I, I feel that things are going back, but it will, will not be as before. It will be, it will be more structured, I would say, because today going to office to, to work on some specific thing or even to having a, a remote meeting, it, it doesn't require you to go to the office, but coming to the office to meet up, to uh, get the challenges on the table and find solution to those challenges, I think we still need to meet physically. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, it's. Um, I think it probably, probably, uh, Moha, maybe you have a different opinion on this topic. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a different yeah, opinion are, are, on everything, but I love the guy. Uh, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's nothing is going to be exactly the same way that it was before. I do. I'll give you an example. So I'm an angel investor and I've invested in about 60 projects. I invest in very, very random things. If I like you and we're there and we shake hands, I'm like, okay, let's do it. Whatever it is. I know nothing about it. If I were to meet you now, uh, Thomas, I don't own a bicycle. I'm not a cyclist. Uh, you know, if you would pitch me and I'm like, I want to go on this journey with a guy. I want this guy as my friend, as part of my, my big family, uh, my extended family. I'd say, let's do it. So to give you an example, I had a friend of mine who is, uh, she's actually flying into Stockholm tomorrow, who is like a, kind of like a, a big women's rights uh, advocate, like an inclusion, one of these, you know, she's just incredible. And I was actually like a big fan of hers, right? So we're friends and I was just a big fan of her content and stuff. Her name is Lainey Molnar on Instagram, if you guys want to look her up, Lainey Molnar. And uh, so Lainey, um, you know, calls me up and she's like, hey, Mo, I want to do this stuff. I want more impact. I want to help more people. I want to reach out to a lot more people, a lot, you know, especially, obviously it's people in the LGBTQ community and all that stuff, but mostly it's like women that have issues that a lot of women have, but like they just need a perspective. And I was like, okay, look, you and I, and by the way, me and her probably disagree on a lot of things. It's not like we're super aligned on everything. No, nobody is super aligned on everything, right? Like, I mean, I'm sure Rashad disagrees with some stuff with his, you know, his, his wonderful wife, Amra. Like, I mean, there's like, it, it, this happens everywhere, but you respect each other. And, and my, for me, it was common sense that it's like, okay, perfect. Even though this happens online and we're literally DMing on Instagram, right? I'm like, yeah, I'll help you with this thing. Let's try to get it out there. You know, if you're, if you're helping X amount of people, let's, let's put it, let's put two, two zeros on that so that we can help more, you know, women and more girls. Uh, with what you're doing and more people that need this message. So uh, for me, it was very easy. I booked a flight and I went to Amsterdam and I met her because to me, it's about that face to face. And that's how I like to do those things. So the combination works. There has been cases where I have a phone call and I end up doing a deal. But then for me, the next thing for me is like, okay, when are we going to meet face to face? So it's, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know that I disagreed that much about Thomas. I don't like conferences that much. I don't go to like events. I was at Slush for like one hour. I flew in and flew out just to go see my a friend of mine be on a panel. Uh, he was speaking. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, but then again, I don't even go into the office that much, right? Because I'm, I'm very much like a special ops behind the scenes guy, even though I'm the CEO of a company now, which is super unnatural to me. Uh, but, you know, I have most of my meetings at home. So like my, I, I, I have people come over at my place and that's partly because it's easier for me to be in that con relaxed context, but it's also super conducive. There is an agenda. It's a huge shortcut because any progress that I can make in anything with you, Thomas, for example, if I'm gonna do a partnership with your company, if I'm gonna do an investment or something, if I go to your office, that, environment is way less conducive to us getting something amazing and literally kind of like leaving being family and saying let's do this together let's go all in that probably happens a lot easier you know at my table at home over a drink um so that's kind of like how i see it and that's kind of like how i live i i there's a the skill set that i have 
there's a lot of bartenders that have the same skill set. And there's a lot of selfie stick salesmen that have the same skill set. I'm just in an industry surrounded by so many smart people that allows me to make a lot more money. And that's why people have an interest in what I do. But my skill set is really the same skill set as a really good waiter that looks you in the eye when they bring you your food. It's just that I get paid millions and not hundreds. Yeah, I think I think this is like interesting interesting view because you know I mean there are like the old ways of of doing business which is uh, you know um, like the the networking term and uh, like how to connect with people you go to a conference you uh, you meet through a, through a, and like and there is like a modern way of 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 connecting that maybe Moha is using but uh, you know I think I think the essence is uh, if if you do things a bit differently uh, than everybody else is doing. Uh, then you can then you can really reap a lot of rewards uh, because I mean even what you are doing Moha is really crazy right I mean nobody does that like 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 pretty much anyone but also like the example with uh, with Thomas and Johan where like he he, he sent an, he stalked a guy online he found his number and sent an SMS who gets an SMS nowadays from from anyone man I mean like like people are even not using that that shit anymore and in a way you know that's that's like a differentiator right because because if you do something differently, then then people are gonna notice it. I mean, I, I haven't received an SMS for the last I don't know three months. So so it's like you get an SMS from Thomas and like let's work together. And like oh, oh my god, I got an SMS. It's interesting. Let's do it. And uh, and I'm gonna tell you about one story. Like uh, when when Amra and Paris were were at Web Summit uh, I don't know a few years ago. Uh, there there was this huge room of you know seventy thousand people listening to to the conference and stuff. And then you know they spotted Alexis Ohanian. Uh, the founder of Reddit, you know, they they, they spotted him like uh, on the corner, and the guy was like giving an interview, and you have this this huge river of people passing by, and nobody is giving a shit about Alexis Ohanian, man. Like they, I don't know, they're just going somewhere, they're going to the next talk, they're going somewhere, you know, and then like then like Amar and Faris were like, hey, but you know that is that Alexis Ohanian there? Yeah, that's him. Let's let's go to him, you know. Let's like who who does that? And then you know they went to Alexis Ohanian, and they just kind of they started talking with him, like because nobody was nobody wanted to do that. Nobody had the, maybe the courage or even an idea to, to do that. And then they 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 had a walk together. They talked about business and stuff. So that's also an example, like how how you can do how you can do things differently. And uh, and I really admire you guys for for, for that. And I think that. You, you are like in like in two different ways. You are you are doing exactly that every day. Um, so so I mean. Uh, your, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it it reminds me. It was uh, me and my brother uh, when we <laughs> once met Paris Hilton and Tara Reid when I used to live in Monaco as a professional bike rider, and it was exactly the same. No no one talked to them and. We just saw the chance in the harbor and, and went forward to them and start chatting with them. And then five minutes five minutes later, we were sitting in a taxi on on our way to one of the hotspots in, in Monaco. And we were partying like all the night. We we knew that completely that we were on a different level. So we were handling them beers instead of champagne just to be sure that they were uh, yeah, taken care of sort of. And uh, yeah, in, in, in the final of the night, they were saying like, we never had so much fun like we had tonight and you are a couple of two foolish farmers. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but I think, I think you need to have the courage to, to just uh, go for it because uh, like a lot of people don't get the attention on that level. They always like start to try with some middle management to try to reach forward instead of just go straight to the point and uh, ask for your favor or uh, give them something in return directly and you get the attention. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna jump in there when you talk about asking for a favor. To me, I will tell you that the mistake that I do get a lot and I, I get like a lot of people like reaching out to me and stuff and people know some of the people that I'm connected to and the worst thing that you can do is reach out to me and be like, hey, could you intro me to Rashad? Like, you know, whatever, insert whoever you want, like big name. My answer is like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Sorry, I, I, we probably shouldn't be swearing, right? You guys can bleep me out. You, you knew this when you invited me. But to me, there's, there's like a way of doing things. It's just like, 
there, there, to me, there's a, I'm very about black and white and what's right and what's wrong and what's acceptable and what's not. And to be honest, to me, there are steps that you just cannot skip. And that is the part, that's the art part. I like that Thomas used that word. So I'm gonna keep coming back to it. That's the art part that a lot of people miss because you see a lot of people at the right events with the right people doing the right things wrong. And it's just, it's a very different thing. It's like, it doesn't matter who you know, it doesn't matter who you talk to, it doesn't matter who follows you, it doesn't matter, that doesn't really matter. It's about literally like, I'll have a, a 17 year old write me a message on Instagram, be like, hey Moha, I'm doing this thing. You know, I'd love to meet up and ask, if, like I take these kinds of meetings all the time. Do I have time to take those meetings? No. Should I stop taking those meetings? Definitely. But every once in a while, somebody will write something that is compelling enough where I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll take this meeting with this, you know, 17 year old boy that has a, you know, because there's, it's that, in Spanish, we call it tacto. Uh, I can't remember the translation to tacto right now. Uh, it's like the, the finesse, the finesse of talking to me. Um, um, and that, that is the part that, you know, that a good waiter has because the good waiter is trying to get a good tip. So that's why yeah. I keep coming back to the selfie stick salesman. If you're in Marbella, you know, and that guy comes with all those fake purses, if he's nice to you and he says the right things, you might pick up one of those fake purses, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, if he's rude or if he says, you know, something out of line, then no. I don't know why the fake purse thing came up. I was in Marbella like a month ago and they were all over the place. <laughs> Yes, so you're talking about the heart. So you're looking for a, for a genuine, genuine way to connect and to to come to come out with with, with heart and not with like you know with a line or with uh, if I understood correctly, uh, having not somebody, out, but with a formal way. Having a good networker on your team in your company, that's the most valuable person in the company. Honestly, to me, I have a few things that like a few rules that to me are black and white. If you're the CEO of a company and you're not good at raising money, you need to rethink your job. You need to go find something else to do. Number two is the person that has the connections, if that person can open all the doors and get you into the right setting, because a lot of people can open a door and get you into a cold, hostile room. The person that can basically set it up so that you're in this padded, uh, you know, I always talk about this. Uh, I, I don't know why, but I've got this image of, for example, Lainey, this friend of mine about this tub of gel. Like if you want somebody to be super productive, you want them to be in this tub of gel where they're not having to worry about anything except the thing that they should be worrying about. If you put somebody in that context so that they can ask for the favor that they need in the right way, if you ask for a favor the right way, that is the most powerful thing they are. Uh, Anna Lavander, who you know, Rashad, I think, um, who is like my Swedish sister, who I love dearly. One day she looks at me and I had invited her to some ridiculous event where all the important people are. I mean, I'm a Costa Rican guy that doesn't speak Swedish in Sweden. And I'm inviting her to this event in Sweden with like a lot of the most important people in Sweden. And like, and I'm like, hugging like this 80 year old guy who's like this titan of industry people are like how do you know him and she sits next to me she holds my hand and she goes i figured it out everybody wants to help you that's why somebody needs to stop. somebody's making some noise Adi, can you please mute uh, the audience just a quick reminder once again please keep your mics and cameras muted yeah, so, sorry for that, Moha. Please continue. She says to me, I figured out why you're successful. And I said, and what is it? Because I, I know what things are because they're very basic things. It's just that people don't do them enough. And she goes, people love to do favors for you. And I was like, I looked at her and I was like, yes, that's the only thing I have going for me. But it's the most powerful thing there is. So just put yourself in a position where people want to help you. So networking or goodwill equity, it's not about just meeting that guy because Thomas was a super smart guy who had a plan about sending this text message 
What he did after that text message is what led to this entrepreneur that has the successful company that we're talking to right now. That's the step that people miss. Yeah, yeah, that, that definitely. But, but I think, I, I mean, the, the, genuine, the, the, genuine, the genuine approach of, um, you know, of reaching out is, is, is an art that has, been, that has been lost through the years. And also, like, when you see how people apply to jobs, you know, they just send this uh, ugly resume and, and shit and, you know, just kind of, you know, formatted in a specific way. And then they send this cover letter and like then, like, you clearly see that they have not researched your company that they have no clue about what you're doing and they're applying to several jobs. I was writing about it, like, and you know, it's it's crazy how uh, how rare it is for people to to write anything meaningful to anyone. No, I'm not talking only about jobs. Like it's like 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 you just don't put in the time to research uh, like Thomas or 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 Moha or whoever you want to reach out to. So you don't put in the time to understand what kind of people they are, or what could be interesting to to offer to them, and then. Uh, you expect to, to 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 get a job or or to get like that connection or to get a new investor or whatever. So so I think like like uh, like using your time to to improve those skills is essential. It's essential because as Moha said, that's gonna propel you forward. Because I think you know uh, also uh, also you guys you get hundreds and thousands and I don't know how many messages every week from from people that you don't know, and 99% of them are writing the same things. Like mm. we are this agency, we want to help you, blah, blah, blah. You just hit delete, archive, delete, archive, ignore, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, so Thomas, uh, one more question for you. So <clears throat> what is your opinion on, on generally on, on personal branding? Uh, so and and that con and that connection to to the outside world in terms of uh, like how do you how do you see yourself from that angle like and how do you I mean do you think that's important or that's not important or like uh, what, what is your your idea around that? Yeah, actually, actually, I have never thought in those terms for for myself or how to act. It 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 goes back again to to who you are as a person and. That's way may, maybe also why I'm talking less than Moha at the moment because I, I, I'm uh, yeah yeah I, I I would say I think pe people needs to meet me uh, live to to get the experience of how how I am and and what my personal brand is so I don't have any kind of like outgoing we're we're doing some work I, I was I was uh, sharing from Facebook very very early it's about like eight years ago and so and i haven't haven't used any social platforms until i started miu and the purpose when i when i uh, logged into linkedin and, and starting to uh, be more presence there it was more about telling the story about cycling in general and why cycling is so important for the humankind rather than trying to reach out for employees or something it was like here i have a platform and i can use the platform to to bring my mission about cycling and why more people should bike in general uh, all across the world so i i wouldn't say i have any particular answer to how i try to build a personal brand or something it's it's more uh, coming natural i would say yeah, I specifically asked you that question because because I uh, I, I know that, that you don't have like such a strong presence, but you you are like very kind of selective on what kind of activities you do, which is exactly the opposite of what every, everyone is doing today. So so like usually like if you ask the young people today, uh, they all have you know TikTok, uh, Instagram, whatever, blah blah blah. And they're spending huge amounts of time there. So so and then uh, then, then then the natural question is like how how that translates to business. Because also I know, for example, Moha, Moha is very like active on Instagram, and 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 like I would love I would love you, Moha, to explain like how do you use Instagram because you use it like as a business tool. You 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 are you are. Uh, can you explain like how do you engage with with all of these people and how do you? Because I I know that I mean as I have as far as I have seen, your main tools are WhatsApp and Instagram, and many people from the from the industry they are not aware that those tools are. Where, 
sometimes where business happens, it's not the email or, or LinkedIn or, or, or whatever. Sometimes it's more about these more personal tools for, for specific people. I, I've, closed, I've closed investment rounds on Instagram and WhatsApp. I've done like literally like it's, and yeah, more than a few. And uh, to, like, I, I don't even check LinkedIn just because I get spammed so much. Uh, and emails, a lot of stuff, you know, gets missed, unfortunately, just because there's so much spam. Uh, but I will tell you, when it comes to personal brand, for me, it's about knowing what I am. If I go out there and I'm bullshitting people and I'm saying that I'm the best in the world that, you know, deep machine learning, people are going to call my bullshit immediately. And that's going to get me one paid gig and I'll buy a car. And then that's the end of the road, right? Like that's, that's basically the opposite of what I do. So for me, it's, uh, it's, it's very clear that I need to just know what I am, look myself in the mirror and say, this is what I am. That's your personal brand. Like, and it's very, very powerful. I had this, um, this guy from Rugsved, which is a small town here, uh, in Sweden, uh, very large, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say his name. People will probably figure out who it is. A very large, uh, fantastic guy. I trained with him in LA. We did a session at Equinox a couple of months ago, very big, very good looking, super muscular, uh, black guy. And he was telling me that he moved to LA because in Sweden, he's always going to be the black guy. And I said to him, that is so strange. Because to me, like you clearly think the opposite of me, because if I was you, I wouldn't go to LA where there's a lot of really big, really muscular black guys. I would have stayed in Sweden and I would have really doubled down on the fact that I'm the guy with the body in Sweden, right? Because for me, it's all about differentiating yourself and leading with the things that are obvious. So for me, it's the Costa Rican guy with the six pack. So that creates that, that authenticity creates the trust. Like you understand, like it's a very, yeah. And, and, to, and people in Sweden at first are like, why is this guy, you know, why is this guy always shirtless? Well, I'm like, I'm from Costa Rica. You go to Costa Rica. If you, if you go to my country, we're always shirtless. Like I, I wouldn't own a shirt. I, you know, I take, uh, I, you call me on this. I take video calls with NASA shirtless, you know, from, from my gym downstairs. And I'm just like, because to me it's about, and nobody's going to look at it and be like, you know, Terry Rector from NASA doesn't look at me and is like, oh, this guy is creepy. No, he's like, this is the animal I'm dealing with. So for me, the personal brand is literally just exaggerating your real attributes. That gets prostituted if you start faking it. If I pretend that I am something else, then it's absolutely unauthentic. I could make money in the short term. I could, you know, create a following. I could create whatever, uh, but that does not have the runway, the longevity that that authenticity will have. You know, uh, it's like it's like truth. The beauty about truth is that you never have to remember what you said. You know, that really comes down to branding. Like I am exactly the person that I am on Instagram in real life. So when you meet me, that's why everybody thinks I'm so consistent. Now, if you think that I am consistent, would you invest in a project that I start? You know everything about me. And you're okay with it? Yeah. That, how would you not invest? To give you an yeah. example of, a, of a, like a transactional connection to, to the brand. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very unconventional, honestly. Like, like a lot of people are, are probably shocked right now when they hear this kind of stuff because, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, but but we have seen that uh, you know. Uh, I mean, for the audience, it's it's important to know that. I mean, we have seen this in in practice. So what what Moha is saying is because a lot of people when when Moha talks about this stuff, they think he's bullshitting. But you know, like like he lives that kind of life that you see on Instagram. I mean, I remember that I don't know like Far Faris met uh, Daniel Ek, the CEO of Spotify. He met him in the gym with Moha because Moha, Moha and Daniel are, are like uh, are like household friends. So so it's like like it's it's it, it's crazy like like the way that that you are able to meet people with Moha. I remember like once he said, "Let's just walk to WeWork," and then we walked like for I don't know like seven kilometers because he has a six pack and I don't. But like you know, I, he just kind of loves to be active all the time. And then he said, "Let's walk to WeWork," and then he he enters WeWork. And then he just starts saying to everyone, hey, this is Rashad, you know, he's a really good, like, uh, tech guy, whatever. 
And then like suddenly I have like uh, six or seven contacts in my hands, you know, so, so it's, 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 it's just, it's just completely crazy. So, but I think it's important for the audience to hear this because um, some of the things that, that, that you guys mentioned is, 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 is incredible and it's going to help uh, people to progress forward. So if you like, maybe now we can take a couple of questions from the chat because we have, we have, um, uh, we have two so far. So uh, one of them is for Moha slash Thomas. Do you think that overall fame, for, it's from Lucas Lundgren, uh, like, uh, so it's, uh, do you think the overall fame that you have gotten with all the success is also a factor that earns people time open doors and allows you to take that pika lunch, whatever it is? And if so, how would you get about to increase that world awareness on yourself? I think more more I can start here and I can fill in. Uh, I need to think one more lap. I, I I think that to be honest, it makes it I think anonymity is the best thing. I used to play the drums and I've always said that I like being in the background. I used to be before I took this job at Mendy, everybody thought I was a personal trainer, which was perfect for me because people weren't coming up to me and asking me for things as much. Um, does it help basically kind of like validate who you are when you come, you meet somebody that you don't know? It can help, yes. Um, it also attracts a lot of the bad stuff. Um, so I, I don't know that it's a very big positive for me specifically because I had some very meaningful connections that could basically if, if I couldn't open a door by myself, my very meaningful equity, you know, goodwill equity connections that were true, they could open those doors for me. So I don't feel that it helps me that much more. Obviously, you get a lot more inbounds. You'll get somebody like, oh, I read this article about you. Can we do this deal together? That kind of stuff. Obviously, if, you know, if Johan was anonymous, then he, Thomas would have never reached out to him and this company would have Ha never happened or it would happen completely differently you know um maybe he would have reached out to me if he would have read something like you understand like so so th there's a lot of what ifs um i think for most people it could have a lot of value for me it doesn't have that much value and i would have rather remain anonymous and i never wanted to be ceo um i've always said it's the worst job i still believe it's the worst job uh, and I can't wait to hand over that job, if I'm going to be completely honest, and go back to what is comfortable to me, which is being in the background and, uh, and doing what I do, which is uh, what I do. Yeah, Thomas, how do you feel like, about this? Like, is, is, is the progression of Neo right now and the company, is, is it helping to get like, more of these inquiries and opening doors uh, more easily? Yeah, but I would I would still say uh, maybe it's it it's more the opposite. I would say where we I I I may I may be good on closing too many doors at the same time. So uh, I I probably walk through a lot of open doors that should be good to to move. But also when when the time is limit limited, you need to to make choices. And for for me, it's rather to to uh, be efficient do, doing my work and also being myself. It, it's not like uh, open every door I, I see that is open and, and try to discover what's behind it, but rather, rather uh, again, back to the artist feel when, when, when the moment is right, then you just go into a door or you just open one another. And I think I, I I wouldn't see you as a drummer in the in the band more because if you are walking around without the shirt, it it looks more like a superstar for me. But may, maybe I have a, another opinion. I see myself maybe more like a drummer who needs a good icebreaker to to uh, open up new doors and and uh, getting getting involved. But may, maybe also are uh, affected a bit about the Swedish culture. I don't know. I, I, and I've always been like that, but but to be honest, I'm not shy. I've never been shy. That's that's obviously a key to this. Uh, and obviously, I take advantage of the things that I have at hand. Like people want to hang out with me. People want to do things. So obviously, that is conducive. There is this 
this life that I have built, right? And I built it in, you know, I'm not just self-made. I'm very recently made, right? Because I mean, me and Tak, we landed in Sweden eight years ago, Rashad. You know, I was completely broke. I think you were completely broke. And now, you know, we're, we're doing way better. Uh, and uh, for me, it's like, you know, I, I didn't really have any, any considerable money, you could argue, up until like the last three years or, or whatever, three, four years. Depends on what you consider, um, you know, how you measure things. But for me, honestly, I, I have done the bulk of this work being in the background. And I would have loved to be in the background and go back to Costa Rica and just be completely anonymous and just go back to the jungle. Uh, that has changed and I take it in stride. And it's like you make the best of everything. And there are some advantages to it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, th the thing is, I don't really want to lead. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that, Thomas. For me, it's just I've never really wanted to lead, but people want to follow me. And that's, that's always been kind of like a kind of like a dilemma for me because people want to follow me, but I don't want to lead them. And that's kind of what's put me in this position. But I think, I think uh, you po pointed out and, and you say you don't want to lead and you have a lot of uh, followers and, and you are uh, uh, having all those smart, amazing people all around you who do, who do the job. And that's, for me, that is uh, typical great leadership. You, if, if, if you see leadership on different levels and, and you are coming up to the top level, that's where you should be. You should be among smart people who is helping you to, to create something. So I think it's rather the opposite, that it's a very good leadership to be the one. Then uh, it shouldn't be necessarily that you should always be the, the front person and, and uh, facing the audience uh, to be a leader. There is a lot of good examples of leaders that are in the background doing the proper work and then they have some other person that is uh, the front singer in the band or whatever, but you are still the leader behind the drums, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean there, there are there are many ways in how how like uh, leaders are born. It's interesting to, to hear like uh, how you guys how you guys feel about this. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, I think sometimes sometimes like leaders are elected or they elect themselves. Uh, but uh, but usually, you know, people say it's it's more like um, you know you are either a natural leader or not, and people recognize that. And then usually, like it happened uh, to you, Moha, like people just recognize you as a leader, even even if you wanted maybe to be more. Like in the background and doing your thing. Um, we have a couple of. Yeah, yes. Sorry, sorry, yeah. please, Thomas. Sorry, no, no. Uh, I see. Like, if 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 you have the, if you have the mindset that you always want to be unemployed yourself, like Moha is saying, that I don't want to be a CEO. That's the best way to work and build an organization that helps you because that always pushes you forward, getting smart people in place that could help you. So they are working in the independently rather than you are saying to them what to do. So I think it's that with that mindset, you are a perfect leader. We definitely, definitely agree. Uh, we have a few more questions in the chat. So uh, we have a huge one from, from Stevan, um, which is um, I, 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 I'm, tr I'm trying to to, to uh, make sense of, of, of the huge text. So, uh, so maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe Stefan can, can ask it live. I don't know if that's possible, uh, but it's around intent. So intent of doing meaningful business together. And well, like, I might uh, join with the, uh, with the quick please. Hello guys. So basically there's a neighbor, he's drilling all the stuff at his home. It definitely feels like an alien dentist office. So sorry about that. Hopefully he doesn't uh, tune in again. So basically I've been a sales guy for 12 years and I, thought that this is a very interesting conversation that I might come to and basically see your uh, opinion on this. You know what I've seen that basically there are like two kinds of people in the sales role and I think there's a direct parallel with networking and what salespeople do. Usually you, see, you have business developers, so those are people who are actually very good at opening doors and then you have people who are executives or deal executives who are uh, very good at closing the deals in a sense. And what I've noticed at the conferences and other stuff is that the best people, the golden people out there are those that know how to do both in a sense. And very rarely you have the full cycle person who knows how to strike the goal 
or actually strike the game on both sides of the coin. And what I've seen is basically that these door openers uh, are good at actually being very empathic. So their intent is actually to understand the person and the, the, the other person doesn't feel that commission breath, let's call it from a sales perspective. You know, you, you don't stuck stuff in his throat, let's say down his throat. But the problem is that, you know, the relationship won't go forward if you don't have an actual intent to do something productive. And usually these people don't do that. On the other side, the door closers have that intent to actually do something productive, but they're not necessarily very empathic. So I think this is a combination that kind of works wonders uh, in that domain and kind of it's very direct parallel with the sales role. I'd like to hear your take on that side as well. Thank you. I, I, I can take that. So I love sales. I think sales is, is probably like my strongest suit. I used to, uh, one of the, the three jobs I've ever had, I, I, I've been a teacher for a long time and it's one I enjoy the most, uh, a grammar teacher, which is something very few people know. But I used to have a job uh, straight out of high school that I took where I was selling these, uh, you know, pay as you go tourism plans in Costa Rica. Like in Costa Rica, it's like, we got these nice beaches. Everybody wants to go to these hotels. A lot of people can't afford these hotels. So you get this thing and you get your dream vacation. You pay for it for 24 months. And I was so good at selling these things that I was making, I literally bought my first car in cash before having a license, like as a kid, like it, I, so I love the process of, uh, I wouldn't say I'm the best guy at doing the research for what needs to be done, but I'm definitely a closer and I am great at opening doors. Uh, and network does help, but it's really not necessary if you're a good, um, if you're a good salesman, you could argue that not even a very good product can be very easily sellable. If you're a good salesman, that's, that's my experience. Uh, but obviously having a network, having a good product, having somebody map out what scalp to get. This is what I always tell my team. It's like, just found me, find me the hardest thing that we can get. And that's what I'll get done. And I say that to all my companies. It's like, just tell me what scalp to bring you. And that's kind of the thing. I always go back to, I don't know, maybe my war days, but, uh, you know, I'm a soldier. I'm not a general. That's why I think I keep coming back to the whole, not being a leader. I'm the guy in the background. Um, or the guy in the front line that doesn't do the interviews because he gets shot. Um, you know, so that's kind of like my approach on that. Um, and sales, I would say, is probably the thing that I am that's closest to my heart out of all the, you know, it's not product. It's not, it's not growth because it's, well, I can enable growth, but I'm not going to look at the, the data and all that. That's just not me. I have no interest. Uh, but I'm good at that interaction and the, you know, going in and closing and following up kind of thing. Um, Thomas, I'm interested to hear. Yeah, I think uh, like a person like you are, you have you have bo both the skill to open up doors and then to close a deal as a salesman. I'm, I'm rather a closer than a door opener. So I'm su super impressed with people who just go forward to someone unknown and start chatting on an event. We have a guy like that in our team, Jay. So uh, he's the business developer uh, in the UK at the moment. And he's like a superman on steroids when it comes to, to bring in a lot of new people in his network, which uh, sale, sales is a lot about creating those opportunities. So earlier this year, we went to a cycling festival together in Frankfurt and he was literally like a tornado on a, on a trailer park. So uh, he, he was like going to each stand and saying that, hi, I'm Ye, I'm from Mio, do you know about us? And then uh, we could start from there and, and uh, going forward to, to close some very important deals for us. But I, uh, I would say that uh, either you, you team up with someone and you're having the both skills, both open the doors and, and closing the deals, or if you are, uh, if you're able, capable, like, like a super salesman is doing both, I would say. To give you an example, so the, 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 one of the things that we did at Fishbury when we scaled is we were in Florida, we were in Tampa Bay, and I, I used to get these people uh, who were, uh, you must remember this, Rashad, from the, and we used to get, uh, I remember I, I had also reach out, like DM a bunch of people, and I was like, find me like girls with a fish, 
like and stuff on their Instagram. And it was just stuff like that, like guys that are fishing that have like that are bragging about their catches. And basically what we would do is we would go to the fishing shows and we would get people to start telling the people next to them to download the app. And that's how we scaled it. And I'm sure you guys are using some of those tactics, which is, you know, in 2014, this was pretty cool and pretty revolutionary, you could argue right now. It's like, but it was it, it was a lot of that analog just go in there and get it done very, very quickly. Just basically get through the door and close as soon as possible. It's kind of like one of those, um, this is kind of how I approach sales is, you know, those game shows where you would have like a, like a cart and they'd be like, you have one minute to put everything in it. That's the thing. So the business development is getting into the supermarket and the sales is putting as much into that cart in those 60 seconds. So that's kind of how I approach it. And that was the approach with Fish Brain and with every company I've been involved in. Yeah, also, also Mio, what Mio does is, is, you know, they are very deep in the community and, and they are there with the people that have their hands dirty to repair the, the bikes. And, and one cool thing that Thomas does, maybe, maybe Thomas, you can tell more about it, is, is having these barbecues where people meet and then, you know, they get to know about that. Maybe you can just spend like a couple of minutes to, to, to say, say, say something about that. Yeah, so since our our platform is uh, Airbnb practically for uh, people who can fix bikes and then you have people who just want to ride the bike. So what we see mo the most important of, of the community building for us is to build uh, the supplier side. And uh, so that's why we're doing a lot of physical meetups. We are doing barbecues. We're doing cycling together events and stuff like that. And it's so fantastic to see how how much engagement we are creating within this community because this is not again uh, something that we have put on strategic level from the beginning but now we see it as a very important thing for the future because we see that the, the, here is where we create uh, true engagement and we can see it also through the digital channels where they are chatting with, with, with each other, giving uh, tips on how to fix a bicycle or where to find the parts and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, it's super, super important for us to build the community feeling within the true engagement. I love that. That's no different to what I do. I mean, that's that's I love that. Invite me to the next barbecue. Yeah, man, because, because in the end, to put it simple and to maybe uh, go, go towards the, the closing words for, for sorry, Eddie, we're, I, we know we are over, uh, we are like, uh, already like overboard, but uh, no you know, eventually people want to have a burger together and want to meet each other. And, and that's, that's how communities are built. That's how, how networks are built. And, and now you froze. Uh, yeah, Adi, Adi, please. How much time do we have left? None? We, so we didn't we hear that question. Four more minutes. Part of that. You froze for like uh, 20 seconds, Rashad. So, sorry, can you repeat, Adi? Yeah, we have can four we more minutes, more but you were frozen for a couple of seconds. We couldn't hear you. All right, all right, sir. So, so maybe if you want, we can take just one final question. Uh, there is uh, a lot of love for for, for Thomas and Moha uh, in, in the chat. I don't know if you had the chance to read it, but like people are loving the webinar, but probably because it was like a very unusual conversation around this topic, <laughs> so which uh, is very unique. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe we can take one more. Um, maybe for um, for 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 both of you. Maybe Thomas can start as a fun thinking exercise. How would you connect to Elon Musk to have a lunch. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I, I'll take another question because I'll be meeting yeah. him. So that's not that's not really really. <laughs> so so, so no, I already told Elon Musk. So so it's only for Thomas. <laughs> Go on. Go on. How do I do to meet to meet Elon Musk? Oh, you're asking me how you're going to meet him? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just be at the right event with the right people and just uh, get in. I mean, it's no different than meeting. Uh, I, I don't know if a text is going to cut it because he probably gets a lot more texts. But what you want to do is honestly, like if I, if we, we, you and I were supposed to plan this out, meet somebody that works in his environment and just get in and be serious about your ask and bring something that's big enough that he's going to be interested in it. If you're 
you're looking at from a work context. If you're looking at it as, hey, we're just going to have tequilas together context, which is how I mostly do things, yeah. it's even easier, but you need to have that skill set. You need to be somebody that he'd want to have tequilas with. Yeah, and also, and also, I mean, the problem with these people is that they usually have a lot of layers of, of people in front that are handling these kind of partnership requests or uh, or connections or whatever. But so, you never so, go through official yeah. channels. I'm anti-official channels. Like, if I want to meet Rashad, I'm not talking to whoever at MOP that's at the front door. Like, dude, I'll 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 figure out what gym you go to and I'll come up to you and I'll shake hands. Like, the power of a handshake, it doesn't matter who you are. Like, that's it. Like when you, when you, when you feel a handshake, that's, that's why to me, the face-to-face -face is so important. Yeah. And you, and you have a strong handshake, uh, man. I mean, like I can tell that like you, you are living in the gym. So, so it's uh, that, that's the deal. <laughs> so, okay. Maybe, maybe one quick question, um, like uh, from, from the audience as well, um, is from, uh, maybe from Amar. Uh, if you can go back in time when you were 19 years old, what, what would you do differently in terms of habits and uh, approach? I, I would like to say that I uh, w would like to be more extrovert, but <laughs> I'm still struggling with that, with that part. So, uh, but there is so, so much for a 19 year old person to do and to uh, explore in life that I have two kids now and then suddenly you realize that uh, uh, there would be so much more opportunity if you were a bit more extrovert during during those earlier years. So uh, yeah, I, I would say that. For, for me, I, 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 I'm pretty happy with how it worked out. I, I, I had an overdose at age 16. So by 19, I, was, uh, I had a lot of history. So to be honest, I, I lived plenty uh, and I'm living a lot. I, I, I don't think I would do anything different. I made so many bad decisions. Maybe I would have you know, not hurt some people along the way, but that's everything else really worked out great. So I, I wouldn't say much. I'd just high five and, you know, Go at it. Keep going at it. It's going to work out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for your thoughts. Um, I hope that uh, this was interesting uh, for for everyone in the audience. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it was. Uh, Adi, do you want to add any final words? For you are the, no. the guy in the it's, background. So we're just doing what you say. <laughs> it's just very hard to sum up. A wonderful and spontaneous conversation like this and in the name of our organization since we're trying to build a community that will function the way this meeting functioned today i must say a huge thank you to both of you and of course to rashad for doing the webinar today and to all people at mop for making it possible i will be open and say that this was so far the best webinar we have done when it comes to energy and when it comes to questions as well. I mean, we didn't have time to read them all. So I, I must apologize to the audience. We'll find a way to get you the answers as, as soon as possible. And well, the session for those who missed this unique opportunity to listen how to get Elon Musk for a lunch or Fika, will be able to watch it on our YouTube channel in the upcoming days. And I hope this was just the first opportunity to work with both of you guys since we're working with MOP for the past three years and I'm more than happy and thankful for this so in the end thank you to everyone in the audience for listening and to both of you and Rashad. Thank, thank you guys. So much, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Appreciate you guys. Thank you until the next time everyone stay safe and see you soon. Good see you soon. See you soon. Um,